Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We are going to get started. Great to see a lot of people here. Um, hopefully you are here because you are wanting to learn about GitOps. Uh, we're chatting with people in the chat. Let us know what problems you're looking to solve and that maybe GitOps will help uh, you solve them. Uh, and uh, we will cover this um, particularly in from the perspective of an open source project called Flux. Uh, which is in the CNCF and very, very close to graduation. Uh, so we'll be covering um, some overview of the benefits of GitOps, what it is, um, some key tenets, and how um, what we believe is the most powerful uh, GitOps tool out there um, is Flux. And so um, hopefully by the end of this, we will solve many of your uh, uh, challenges and answer your questions. And so please, uh, it's great to see people already in the chat, but uh, please engage with us that way. We're happy to help you. Uh, great. My name is Tomo. I'm the VP of Developer Experience at a company called WeaveWorks. Uh, and uh, Priyanka Ravi, aka Pinky, on our team, um, will be walking you through these great topics. Um, so before we get started, I'll do a quick uh, overview. And Stacy, our community manager, is in the background. And uh, yes, we'll advance the slide. Uh, so Stacy um, Potter, who's our community manager and brings these great talks to you. Um, uh, and Pinky and I, we all work for a company called WeaveWorks. If uh, this is your first time coming to one of our series talks, welcome. Uh, maybe you came to us through our meetup groups. Um, welcome through those. So thanks for joining. Uh, so as a company, uh, we're a startup based in uh, San Francisco, London, New York, Berlin, um, and a few other cities, as well as a very distributed team. Uh, and uh, we have a couple of products that are based on GitOps. Um, they are called Weave GitOps. Uh, but so much of us, you may have heard us, uh, because we are founded on open source. Um, we've had many things in the past. You might have heard of WeaveNet for networking, um, um, Scope, and uh, EKS Cuddle for people who are using Amazon's EKS. Um, but, you know, many, many more, but a core few that I'll mention here are projects that were started here and that are now in the CNCF. Uh, as I mentioned, Flux is very close to um, graduation and uh, Flagger is a related project that has been folded into um, the Flux uh, repo. Uh, and so if you've never heard of it, hopefully you'll know a lot by the end of this, um, but it really is a um, continuous delivery uh, project that was put out there very much leveraging the capabilities of Kubernetes. And it's really the project that kicked off the term GitOps that our CEO uh, coined after noticing how we were um, starting to set up our infrastructure as well as noticing what was uh, changing in the uh, field. Uh, so it's really exciting to um, see that term put out there and kind of taking off like wildfire. And this was a, at this point uh, a good handful of years ago. Uh, and then Flagger itself um, relies on Flux and Kubernetes and provides things like Canary deployments and blue-green deployments. And so it made sense that it would be part of the Flux project. So if you have any questions about those, as well as our other open source projects, um, please uh, um, respond to the email that we'll send after this event, as well as chat with us on Slack. We're happy to answer um, any remaining questions that you have. Um, so if this is the first time you're hearing about WeaveWorks, uh, check out our website, weave.works. Uh, and uh, yeah, reach out to us if you have any questions. So a little bit of housekeeping for this talk. Um, we have bracketed about uh, 60 minutes, uh, but depending on how many questions are or whatever, we'll probably be wrapping up at about 30, 40 minutes. Uh, this is sort of a, a shorter talk. Um, and the goal here is really to um, if you're new to GitOps and Flux, uh, to give you those basics, but also if you've been using Flux for a while, a lot of times it's hard to um, be up on all the greatest uh, and latest developments that uh, really move forward so quickly with the project. So we're calling it a refresher because uh, we do notice that even advanced users are like, oh, you know, I guess I didn't realize that now there's that capability or that feature or a new way of doing things. So hopefully it's a um, effective way for you to uh, get up uh, to speed. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got Pinky on our team with us, uh, and then some basic things. I think by now people know how to use Zoom. Um, I think the main thing is um, when you're in the chat, that's where we'll answer your questions or we'll be um, following your questions. So it's great to see that um, people are posting where they're from uh, and to post to everyone. So unless you have something burningly private, please make sure you choose the drop down and post your chat messages to everyone so that people can uh, converse with each other. Okay, 
So um, what we'll be going through, as I mentioned, is Flux. Uh, I will go through this slide again at the end, uh, but just a reminder, you know, if you uh, want to check out these links, uh, fluxcd.io, sorry, fluxcd.io is the easy link to remember. Um, if you like our project on GitHub, please star us. Um, and then at the bottom here, we also have a Slack channel, um, so please join us there. Uh, we also have a very active um, uh, GitHub discussion area, which I think is probably the most helpful um, to be able to search and find things, you know, the way Slack is, um, you know, it's a bit ephemeral. So uh, searching there is a lot easier as well. So we definitely encourage people to engage with us um, through PRs issues as well as GitHub discussions. And finally, um, we'll show this at the end as well. But um, if you haven't joined our meetup, any of our meetup groups uh, yet, We'll follow up with you um, with the link. Um, that's pretty much the best um, like single source of truth of all the events that we have. But uh, thanks to Stacy, and uh, we also have a community manager, Vanessa, on our team. We've got all these wonderful talks uh, getting lined up, and we have a really, really great spring calendar of all kinds of uh, talks and workshops to get you uh, started and knowledgeable about GitOps. So yes, any of those, reach out for questions. So now it's time for our talk. Uh, we're excited to have uh, Pinky on our team now, um, who used to be in a company as a end user of Flux, so really knows the ins and outs of, of Flux, and now is so excited about it that has joined our developer experience team to help you gain all the benefits that, that Pinky has um, been able to enjoy and Pinky's team was able to enjoy by having GitOps with Flux. So with that, I will hand it over to Pinky. And I think you're muted, so just letting you know. Sorry. Um, such a Zoom noob, apparently. Okay, so can you all hear me now? I think y'all can, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so welcome. As Tama all mentioned, this is a, a refresh, refresher on GitOps and Flux. Basically, um, if you are new to GitOps and Flux, this will be like a great introduction. We're going to stay pretty high level. Um, but for those of you that have been using GitOps and Flux, hopefully you'll still benefit as well. Um, and so I am Priyanka Ravi. I also go by Pinky. I am a developer experience engineer at WeBorks, and I am dog mom to two rescues. And I just want to take this opportunity to bombard y'all with their pictures of my girls. So um, basically, I um, came from State Farm and on at State Farm for the last two and a half years. I was actually on the GitOps platform team where we actually enabled GitOps for three different platforms, one of them being Kubernetes. So, um, and for that, we actually did use Flux. So I'm also coming from a user standpoint of Flux. I know some of said all this already, but yeah, that's my background. So why should you even care about GitOps and why should you be using it? There are so many benefits to GitOps and I am a testament to them actually working. I've, I've benefited from, from it using all these. So basically, Individuals, teams, and organizations who implement GitOps experience many benefits, including stronger security guarantees. So because um, GitOps tools uh, unique ability to treat everything as code, you it, it has a direct impact on security. Um, basically, because you're, you're putting everything in code, everything can be held in version control. So everything has already been reviewed, all the changes have been that all the changes that have been made have been approved. And there's a, an automated pipeline that actually uh, deploys it. So there's no manual processes involved. And therefore, you're less likely to run the risk of be, being at work on a weekend, having to debug an error that you know someone, someone manually made that you can't find in the code. Um, and so also because of that, <laughs> it leads into the next point that there's an increased developer and operational productivity. Because there's no manual processes, developers can actually focus on things that matter, such as the end product, and they don't have to worry about um, doing actual manual deployments. So that enhances the developer experience. And again, they don't have to be there on Saturdays debugging why, why things went wrong. And there's also, because it's using version control, there's a, um, there's a trail of like what actually was put in and uh, who reviewed it, there's, there's more um, ability to know what went wrong. And so that improves the stability because it is through code and it's, it's more reliable because of the automated process. So you end up, because there's code, it's consistent and standardized. You, you actually have everything written out. And then um, 
why flux? So specifically, why should you care about flux? Flux, it takes, it, it's even, it's even, it, it makes the whole process even better because it removes the cube control problem. It reduces developer burden. So they don't have to, you don't have to worry about cube control versions to be able to interact with the cluster. There's no manual processes involved. It's also extensible. It's super, super versatile. It works with existing tools. It's flexible, it's modular, and a natural extension of Kubernetes. It's also extendable um, in the sense that it's it's developed around a microservice architecture. So you can basically pick and choose what features you want to include in your Flux experience. Um, it's very tailorable to your actual needs. It also comes with out-of-the-box support for Customize and Helm, which is super, super helpful um, if you're already doing Helm deployments and you're already using Customize. And uh, it's designed for Kubernetes completely. So it's designed to be just a drop-in thing that works really well with all of the tools that are already out there in Kubernetes. Um, and then before I move on from this slide, I just wanted to pause and see if there's any questions about why you should be here in general or why you should care about GitOps or Flux uh, overall. Is there anything, Tomo? Oh, um... no. I think it's good, yeah. Okay, all right, I'll move on. All right, so on our site, you'll find that we have these um, this flux and short description. And these are just bullet points that we really like to highlight. They're basically eight statements that we find very important for you to know about flux. Um, and so basically, I'm gonna run through these really quickly, but I will go more in depth with them later. Um, basically, Flux provides GitOps for both apps and infrastructure. You just push to Git and Flux does the rest. Um, it works with your existing tools and it works with any Kubernetes and all Kubernetes tooling that you may be using. Flux does multi-tenancy and as we like to say, multi-everything. It alerts and notifies and users trust Flux. Um, and also that Flux has a lovely community that is very easy to work with. So I will come back to these. Um, so. Hold on, hold on, we'll come back to them. So I wanna go back to what is GitOps. GitOps is an operating model for cloud native applications such as Kubernetes. But I do wanna highlight here that it's not just for Kubernetes. If you are doing a multi-cloud um, infrastructure such as like what I was doing in my experience, you can use GitOps for all your different platform needs. Um, but we will be talking mostly about Kubernetes because we're gonna be talking about Flux and because Flux is for Kubernetes. So what, uh, what it does is it utilizes a version controlled system. Most commonly this is Git, but as, I'll, as you'll see later on, you can actually use other um, version control systems, but basically it uses the version control system as the single source of truth. So by doing that, you don't have to have other third party tools that are actually you know, keeping track of auditing or any of compliance standards because probably developers in your at your company are already using or as a user you're already using something such as git and um, you can just take advantage of the tools that are already being used instead of adding on additional layers to your deployment process also it enables continuous delivery through automated deployment monitoring and management by a version control system so the automated part is something that's like very important to highlight here because again it goes away from the manual processes so it does uh, get away from a lot of human error. Um, and then you're managing your infrastructure and applications declaratively. And that is something that I'm gonna talk about in the next slide, but also it's very important because it's um, actually something that's written out in code. So I'm gonna talk about now about the GitOps principles. And these are basically a set of best practices that have been defined through discussions with many different vendors and users experiences, um, it's a set that's compiled by the GitOps working group. And if you want to know more about them and, and, and uh, the, their recommendations, you can go to opengitops.dev. But I just want to mention here that even though these are a set of best practices that are guideline that are outlined, don't feel like you have to have all of them done or met in order to use GitOps. Everyone's journey is completely different. Um, and you can start using GitOps basically at any stage, and then you can add in hardening and tweak your, your setup to meet you know, these, these guidelines as you go. Um, don't feel like you can't use it because you don't meet these. But so the, the, the first uh, guideline is that a system managed by GitOps must have its desired state expressed declaratively. And the reason that this is important is because 
in order in order for something to come and pick it up and actually apply it you need to have your um your end state written as code and also because it's written as code you can actually see later it's reusable there's a lot of benefits to having um a declarative state but basically the desired state is also stored in a way that enforces immutability versioning and retains a complete version history so this one is also very important because even if again like i said even if you're not meeting these please don't feel like you have to but the the importance is that it with immutability you can know that what you actually set as the desired state is what's actually out in code there's not um manual things like there's there's not a uh, some way to sneak in a change or anything like that it, it actually is what you desired it to be um and then versioning is very important obviously because you know they as a as a deployment you can actually see like what version is actually out there and then um the complete version history is very important because like i said with the auditing his auditing trail it actually is already built into something such as git so you can you can benefit from using the same tool you don't have to add in third party tools um that actually maintain auditing trails and all that all right the third one is that software agents automatically pull the desired state declarations from the source so this one is is important so you'd have basically something that is continuously listening to the source and and actually seeing what the desired state is and that kind of goes into this the fourth one which is software agents continuously observe actual system state and attempt to apply the desired state so something such as flux <laughs> would be basically be continuously observing your for your, for what your changes are and then actually applying those changes and making sure that that's what uh so basically to, to making sure that what you actually desired is what's actually applied so that that's the whole automation part of it right so i'm going to go into what is flux flux is a git centric package manager for your applications but like i mentioned git isn't the only system that you can use um and basically it provides a set of continuous and progressive delivery solutions for kubernetes it is a natural extension of the benefits of Kubernetes already. At the core, basically the very basic core, what it does is it continuously monitors for your, your version control system and it applies the desired state that's been declaratively stated there. The nice part of this is that you don't have to worry about configuration drift either because it also hard applies on a schedule as well. So if things have gotten out of sync, which it, ha it does happen every now and then, um, for some reason, then it will actually set it back to your desired state. So you can rest comfortably knowing that what you actually wanted it to look like is what is out there, what you've declared. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, Flux really reduces developer burden because it removes the need for manual deployment processes. Basically, Flux is built from the ground up to use Kubernetes API extension system and to integrate with Prometheus and other core components of the Kubernetes ecosystem. Like I mentioned, it plays very nicely with the existing tools that you're already using. It's constructed with the GitOps toolkit, and it's a set of composable APIs and specialized tools for building continuous delivery on top of Kubernetes, which brings me to uh, that Flux is a set of Kubernetes controllers. If you're not familiar with controllers, a controller handles the life cycle of objects in Kubernetes, basically what should be done when an object is created, updated, deleted, etc. And because of this microservice architecture, you can actually pick and choose what pieces you want to utilize for your Flux experience. Whatever your needs are, you can make it, you can tailor it to meet them. And so the controllers are the source controller, the customized controller, the helm controller, the notification controller, and the image reflector and automation controller. I'm going to come back to these at the end. Um, I just wanted to briefly like touch on them right now. So you, cause you'll hear me talk about them through these next statements that I'm going to go through, but I just wanted to mention them, but I will come back to them. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to talk about um, for a Flux highlight is that Flux provides GitOps for both apps and infrastructure. So this is very important to mention because it's not just for deploying your apps. It can also manage your infrastructure using things such as multi-tenancy, which I'll talk about in a second. But the first thing I want to mention as a sub point is that Flux has an extension that you can add fl called Flagger. And basically using Flux and Flagger, you can actually deploy apps with canaries, feature flags, and AB rollout. So if you are using progressive delivery, don't fret, you can still use Flux. Um, you just have to add on Flagger and, and, it, and it works. And so 
Um, Flux also can manage any Kubernetes resource. This is an important statement I want to make too, because it can, um, it, it really can stand up. Anything that you can imagine, any Kubernetes resource that you can imagine, it can do it. Um, and then infrastructure and workload dependency management is built in. So there's a really cool feature called um, depends on. And with using customize, you can actually tell it. So let's say you have in your application deployment, you have a database that your application uses and you need the database to be stood up first, obviously. So you would actually tell in customize, you would say like my application depends on um, the, the database being stood up. So then what it will do is it'll make sure that the database is already stood up first and then your application will be spun up after the database is stood up. So all your requirements are met. And so that's a really nice feature um, for when you're de developing with an order of operations in mind. The next thing I wanna mention is that you just have to push to Git and Flux does the rest. Um, sorry, Tomo, was there a question or something? Uh, there was, but okay. I realized yeah. I could I could wait till no, the no. end of this. It's, it's okay. Uh, it was just a specific question about um, this flagger or some other atom allow Flux to match Argo CD's sync windows feature. We have requirements that applications get updated within particular outage windows or on certain schedules. That one thing. Uh, sorry, that's one thing uh, where we're. Uh, and then I guess it trailed, it trailed off. <laughs> um, so, so um, yeah, apologies. Maybe it's a bit specific. So um, yeah, let me, can, can you like, don't forget it. I'll come, I will come back to it later. Yes. That's okay. Oh, and then Christian, oh. our, Christian, our buddy is helping answer. So. Oh, awesome. <laughs> thank you, Christian. Aww. Love you, Christian. Thank you. Um, I love it. Okay. So, all right. So. Proceed. <laughs> Thank you. So just push to get and Flux does the rest. That's really a true statement. You really just have to make a change and Flux does everything for you. It's, it's like magic, but it's not, <laughs> but it is. So Flux enables application deployment, continuous delivery. And um, like I mentioned earlier, with the help of Flagger, progressive delivery as well through automatic reconciliation. So basically it's continuously reconciling with your um, desired state and it makes sure that, you know, what's out there is what you wanted. So it's continuously pulling your changes. Very cool. Flux can even push back to Git for you with the automated container image updates to Git, um, image scanning and patching. So these are some actual, th this is actually really cool. You can add on, um, it doesn't come bootstrapped by default, but you can actually add on the image controllers. Um, and basically they work together to update the Git repository when a new container images are available. And this is like a super cool feature. Um, yeah, so if you if you need that, that's that's available as well. Um, Flux works with your existing tools. So what you're already using, it it takes advantage of that. So that's the benefit here is that Flux works with your Git providers, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket. It, you can even use S3 compatible buckets as a source. It works with all major container registries and all CI workflow providers. I specifically myself have used GitLab with the GitLab CI um, pipelines. And it, I can attest that it really does. It's very easy to work with. Um, it really is very simple to get started with and it just kind of connects to your repos and it just starts listening. So it's really simple and it works very well with what you're already using. Um, and then Flux works with any Kubernetes and all common Kubernetes tooling. It works with Customize, Helm, RBAC, and policy-driven validation, OPA, Kyverno, and mission controllers. It really is like a puzzle piece that just like falls into place with what you're already doing. And that's kind of the benefit is that like, it's already taking, it works really well with the things that you are definitely already using. So it's not, you don't have to worry about, oh, is it going to work with this thing? Can I, can I integrate it with this? It will work. It's, it's very easy to use in it. it. I've used many of these different things. And then Flux does multi-tenancy and we like to say multi-everything. Um, and this one's a little near and dear to my heart because before I left, left State Farm, this was a big part of what I was doing was um, setting up the multi-tenancy using this version of Flux. Basically, Flux uses true Kubernetes RBAC via impersonation and it supports multiple Git repositories. I do wanna hit on the fact that it does support multiple Git repositories. Um, so that's, that's a benefit that you can get with Flux. Um, it has multi-cluster infrastructure and apps work out of the box with cluster API. 
And basically it can use one cluster, Kubernetes cluster to manage apps in either the same or other clusters. It can spin up additional clusters too and manage clusters, including lifecycle and fleet. So I myself have used it for soft tenancy. So soft multi-tenancy is so basically having a cluster with many namespaces that teams, so each team gets a different namespace and it works really well. And, and another benefit, you know, a side benefit of using multi-tenancy is that everything is, is written through code. So everything, like if I wanna go see, you know, does this namespace exist? What's the current state of, what are the resources defined in this state, uh, uh, namespace? What, what is the state of this cluster? I can just go check the code and, know what exactly it, it looks like. I don't have to go through and do API calls or CLI commands to know what is out there. And that's a that's really a beauty of it is that it's all just in in your Git, your version control system written out, right? Um, and so yeah, and, and like it says, it cannot even manage other clusters. It's, it's a very, very, very strong feature of Flux. Oh, sorry. Okay, so also Flux alerts and notifies. Um, basically using the notification controller, Flux provides health assessments, alerting to external systems and external events handling. It, again, you just get push and you can get notified on Slack and other chat systems when Flux applies your change. Um, it's, it's great. I've also utilized the notification controller um, for alerting and it, it really will just, it, you can push it to a chat system to tell you like every time there's been a deployment. So if you are someone like on a Get, GitOps platform team, you can see what how much it's being used, what changes are being made. It's very cool. Um, even just on a team level, you can see like when a change has been made. Um, and then also you can get notified if Flux is you know unhealthy for some reason, if anything is going wrong, which is great because then you can react really fast and you can you can fix everything. And then also users trust Flux. Um, so, I mean, including me, right? And we've heard from many of our consumers that Flux just works really out of the box. It works the way it's promised. And also Flux is a CNCF incubating project and was one of only two projects alongside Helm, which was categorized as adopt on the CNCF CICD tech radar, which is huge. Um, so that really goes to show exactly how People really do trust Flux. It's um, it, it works as promised. Uh, I've had great experiences using it, and you know we hear that all the time. And then Flux is a lovely community that is very easy to work with. We welcome contributors of any kind with any level of experience. Um, the components of Flux are on Kubernetes control, core controller runtime, so anybody can contribute, and its functionality can be extended very easily. If you are interested in getting started contributing to Flux you can go on our on, on fluxcd.io and we actually have a, in our docs, we have a contributing guide and you can just check out our issues and see if there's any, there's lots of beginner friendly issues too. So yeah, please join our community. And then what Flux's controllers do. So I'm gonna come back to this. I know I've alluded to several of them, but basically the source controller at its core fetches resources and stores them as artifacts. So basically what that means in a general sense is that at the basic of what the source controller is doing is it's listening for your version control system and it's just seeing if there's a change and then it grabs it and stores it. That's what it does. And then the customized controller comes along and it sees if there's, it sees whatever the source controller has pulled and it applies that. So it actually applies manifest, it, run mani it runs manifest generation using customize. And so, um, and then the Helm controller also does a deployment of Helm charts. So if it sees that there's a, uh, a Helm resource out there, then it will actually deploy the Helm chart the way that it's been uh, uh, specified. And then you have the notification controller, which I mentioned earlier, it's the notification dispatch and it specializes in handling inbound and outbound events. And then you have the image controllers. Um, so the image reflector controller, it reflects image metadata for the automation controller and the image automation controller updates the YAMLs when new container images are available. So they work together basically and um, they can update a Git repository when new container images are available. And like I mentioned earlier, they don't come by default with the bootstrap, but you can add them and uh, utilize them that way. So basically, as you can see, the controllers work together to produce an outcome. And who doesn't want a nice fat stack of pancakes? <laughs> so basically, for instance, like the source controller and the customized controller work together to actually realize your changes. And obviously the Helm controller plays into that as well. So 
they this really is that microservice architecture so you can really tailor your experience with flux in this way and flux works with other tools it works with so many tools that i can't even list them all here um, I don't even think I could come up with a whole list of them. It, you know, just to name a few, here's a list that it works with um, and plays very nicely with. So basically everything you're already using, it, it works with. And then um, I want to hit on, I want to end on like reasons I and others really love Flux. Um, so basically it really just makes life easier so i mentioned earlier the fact that it's automation and that there's no manual processes you don't have to maybe end up at work on a weekend trying to figure out what went wrong with your manual deployment um, because it's all automated and because what you actually told it to do is what actually ends up in code uh, as as a in your deployments and um another thing is multi-tenancy this one like i said i mentioned earlier is very near to me um i'm a big fan of the way that flux does multi-tenancy it um i've already mentioned the benefits of it where it basically is all written in code and then you know it's it's um more observable and it it's more repeatable as well and then um depends on is a really cool feature i mentioned earlier as well where you can order the events that you need it to happen uh in in which order you need them to happen so that you actually end up with the desired results the Helm integration is um, unparalleled is great. <laughs> it's it's very, it works really well with Helm. And so if you are utilizing Helm charts, which you should be utilizing, I'm a big fan of Helm because they, you know, it's just very, um, why repeat things when something's already done for you in my opinion. So um, it, it works great with Helm. And then also the notifications and alerting is a great feature that you should take advantage of um, so that you can kind of keep up with what's happening in real time. And then um, Bootstrap. So I, I I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of the Flux CLI in general. I actually think it might be my favorite CLI I've ever used because it's very very understandable. If you even if you are not super familiar with the docs, the CLI will tell you a lot of things you need to know. Um, it also has a lot of uh, examples that you can just copy and paste it. Like, for example, if you're trying to bootstrap for the first time, there's a lot of examples on how to do it. It, it runs you through it and then you can just copy and paste. Um, so I'm a big fan of the CLI and then bootstrapping in general is super, super an easy way to get started with Flux. And so I'm a big fan of the simplicity of how you just bootstrap it and it just works. It connects to your uh, Git repository and it just does everything. And then you're, you're already set up with Flux and so it's great. So um, I want to leave you all with some uh, things that you can follow up with. Um, you can browse the docs at fluxcd.io slash docs. You can try Flux following our getting started guide at fluxcd.io slash docs slash get started. And um, please join our meetup next week, uh, February 2nd. Uh, I'll be basically diving more into how to get started with Flux. So it'll be more of a technical dive and I'll include some demos on how to actually get started setting up Flux as well. And then also join our CNCF Slack at hashtag Flux and sign up for the Flux mailing list for monthly updates, announcements and everything. And so at this point, I'm going to take advantage of showing you guys my girls a few more times. And also, I want to stop and ask you if there's any questions. Uh, yes. Um, well, we got definitely thanks for the refresher, as well as some nice uh, conversation threads going on in the chat. So awesome. I think overall, um, yeah, if anybody has anything specific aside from what's been being uh, discussed, I just want to um, reiterate. Uh, you know, the value of some of the things here. So as I talked about, you know, Pinky has joined our team as someone who's been, you know, uh, a long time user of Flux and, uh, you know, shared some of those those examples. I mean, we've literally talked to people who said, yeah, before we were able to use Flux, our team was on pagers on Saturdays and that's just not a way to live, right? The automation wasn't well in place uh, such that they didn't have that sense of security from the reliability of a system that they knew they could, you know, get, um, uh, you know, logs that they could look at if something went wrong, you know, have an audit trail, um, have ways to roll back uh, easily, be able to make corrections, and then just in generally, you know, like have uh, a very reliable system to move things to production, right? So I think um, those are just some of the many things that um, Pinky has highlighted that you can get both 
generally with the concept of GitOps and um, how we've designed Flux. And um, one thing I just want to reiterate is security, security, security. Um, you know, it is so important that, you know, we're not putting things out there in open source that's just sort of like, um, you know, use it in and uh, use it at your own risk. And that's why it's so imperative that um, we've been in the CNCF, we've gone through the security audit through the CNCF with a third party um, company. And, you know, we're just really excited with just sort of the validation of the design and the work that we've done so that um, basically our to do list from that audit is mostly documentation, which Pinky and Kingdon and others here on team uh, that you've been seeing in chat um, have been helping with and we're um, closing that out. And so we're really excited that we've basically made all those steps as we are going through the final um, phase uh, to graduation. So it's um, just a core part of why we're designing Flux. You know, security is first and foremost an important thing as we design it. And so it was really great to have um, that validation through this process. Um, so yes, as uh, Pinky has these links here, uh, check out uh, Flux. Uh, if you like it, please uh, give us a GitHub star if you haven't already. Um, and then uh, CNCF Slack, uh, the Flux channel, as well as there's a Flagger channel, is definitely where we can continue to um, help you and answer your questions. Um, I see a question here, someone asking, you know, what paid features or services are available with Flux? Uh, so certainly um, if you look at our site, there is a community and support page um, where there are companies who provide uh, paid support if you know you want to use open source, but you want to be able to lean on, you know, somebody to help. Um, and of course, hey, we're going to plug our company, our company Weaveworks, of course, as the creators of Flux, um, we have a great professional services team, as well as our products we've GitOps uh, have are built on Flux and therefore obviously if you were to use um, our products they're designed to basically be Flux with a particular opinionated way of doing things um, and then um, you know for that if you were to go to the enterprise level of course that's supported um, and then it has more enterprise features for teams and organizations and um, you know, more advanced um, level things. So for all of those, um, certainly you'll get an email um, right after this, that's uh, CC to me. So you can feel free to respond and we'll be happy to follow up with you on anything that you need on a supported level, absolutely. Um, what else is there? I see some more chats going on. Um, otherwise, um, there was one other thing. Oh, Stacy, is this your last slide, Pinky? Yes, okay, uh, Stacy, if it's okay, um, if you could take over, we'll go back to those closing slides to remind everybody of um, upcoming talks, because we not only have uh, Pinky's talk um, that was mentioned for Wednesday. So if you like this refresher and you'd actually like to get started um, on Wednesday, Pinky will walk you through getting started with Flux in actually two ways. Um, so we'll have, uh, um, so yeah, we'll have a um, two ways of doing it. One way that's sort of like straight flux, and then one way where we have kind of flux with guardrails that kind of get you. Um, one of the biggest questions we have is around like, how do I organize my repo structure? Um, and we have you know uh, a way to do that. That in thirty minutes you'll have a version of that, so that you can see if that works for you, and you can get up and running very, very quickly, and then decide like if they're alterations or customizations that you want to make. So I think it's uh, two great ways to get started with Flux so that you can uh, figure out what works for you. Uh, and then we have Kingdon here in the chat. So we'll do a call out. Kingdon does a Flux bug scrub uh, for anybody who wants to help out in the community. And we're actually talking about how um, those are weekly. And I think one per month now, Kingdon will also start adding a little bit of short talks for a variety of content areas if people are interested in that. Uh, and then other workshops, et cetera. We've got a great calendar, like I mentioned. So yeah, with that, if there isn't anything else. Um, Actually, I, wanted, um, yes. I had noticed that someone had posted in the chat about migration and didn't know if maybe Pinky wanted to talk a little bit uh, to that since that was kind of a topic or Tamo maybe just remind people that we, had, uh, we have migration workshops and things like that if uh, anyone's interested in reaching out. Migrating yes. specifically from Flux 1 to Flux 2, I guess, right? Correct. That's yes. the older version. So yeah, we I was asking one person who's been a longtime user, but they've been on um, the latest version of Flux. So that's great. Um, 
However, if anybody has been a long time user of Flux and has been on sort of the older version and would like to have help, yes, Stacy, thanks for reminding us. We can, um, if you ask us about it, we have uh, just like a quick questionnaire. Uh, and when we help people migrate, like we are not WeaveWorks, we are representing the CNCF as a, a project for that and anybody in the community can help. But um, yeah, um, as we have done for uh, Pinky's previous Yeah, company, I was gonna say. <laughs> we, we, yeah. you know, we run these short <laughs> workshops to sort of give some more handholding um, through the migration process as we, you know, prepare. Because right now we're still, um, you know, both in the old and new versions of Flux and, and Kingdon here um, is continuing to support people. Um, but we want to prepare people to have a successful experience to go to the latest, greatest version of Flux. So if you're interested in that, then definitely um, we'll, maybe we can add a note about that in the follow-up email to prompt people. So if anybody is looking to migrate, we are always happy to help. So, yeah. So with that, um, if there isn't anything else, thank you so, so much for joining and such a wonderful uh, chat thread and all your fantastic questions. Uh, we hope to see you on Wednesday. And if you can't make it, well, everything's recorded and posted on YouTube um, and we're happy to chat with you on Slack. So thanks, Stacy, as always, for organizing these great talks and Pinky for the first talk here at WeaveWorks joining the team. <laughs> And the, there was someone also from Arizona, so that was cool. Oh, um, yeah, they, they were actually uh, uh, from, yeah. They were oh, from your old friends. Ah, oh, I yeah. see. The, <laughs> they're all buddies. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, excellent. Yeah, and if everybody's still talking, um, you'll see that we are on Slack. So, you know, we'll, we'll close out this this Zoom. But um, if you want to continue talking with Kingdon and others, then we'll see you on the Slack channel. So thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye.